Citizen Television. Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Planetary Persuader. I am Cosmic Kev, your astrologer, Jaitoshi, and host of this uh, wonderful experience of the celestial world. So uh, let's let's take it let's take it for what it is, and let's talk about what's going on this week between October 10th through the 17th, 2014. Okay, so we're coming down from that full moon. We've got a moon in Taurus for you people viewing it on Friday. The moon's in Gemini for you people viewing it on the 11th and Saturday. And so we're in a waning moon period. So the moon's shrinking now. So this is a time where we take the energy of what has just come about and we... Um, we shrink it, you know, we take it to something else and we take it to another level where we, we never really had to before. And um, so I want to uh, just go over what we got going on. So we had a full moon last Wednesday morning and it wasn't in Hosta like I mistakenly had said that time. Um, it, it actually was in, uh, in closer to, to Raviti, which is kind of like the end all of the moons. And, um, but there is some beneficiary qualities to it. Right, right now, for Friday viewers, moon's probably going from Barani into Kritika. And Kritika cuts out all the evil, cuts out all the nonsense. So, um, Western astrology, we're looking at, you know, moon and Taurus, so we're trying to stabilize ourselves, you know, we want to chill out, you know, there was too much activity this week, we're wanting to relax and settle things down, um, we still have, Venus is still in Libra, and we still have uh, Mercury retrograde, but as of today, early, uh, well, at 10.27 a.m., Mercury retrograded out of Scorpio back into Libra. So things that took place like the last week of September, we're having to, to deal with over again. And um, that's part of this, uh, this retrograde action of, of Mercury. I mean, we won't really get back to Mer where Mercury was until later on this month where, you know, when or actually early November, like around the 8th or 9th of November. So, I mean, really, until the next full moon, we're still going to be feeling some fallout of Mercury retrograde, even though it does go direct on the 25th. Okay, so we've got um, Mars and Sagittarius promoting us to uh, love nature, explore things, explore the whole world, the new frontier, boldly. Um... We're on the tail end of the Grand Trine in fire. So, I mean, we still have Uranus and Aries and Mars and Sagittarius and Jupiter in uh, Leo. And uh, these are all essentially male planets. You know, they're, they're definitely ones that are going to expand that principle. And, and in Western astrology, in a fire sign, it's just like, you know, we need to go. And, and you know, men need help. You know, they need help so that they can respect women better, allow them to do things for, for the planet, but also that they can be honored and be able to go hunting and do the things that make men feel good, <laughs> you know, and all that stuff too, so that there's 
a balance, you know, they're every both male and female need to be honored constantly. Even if we're in a patriarchal society that things are in balance, we still have to have the feminine Shakti qualities of nurturing. And we have to nurture our male in order to do it. It's not all just, you know, drill sergeant, hard working, you know, bear your pain type of thing. It's uh, really negotiating for goodness. Okay. So, um, without any further ado, sign by sign, here we go. So, greetings Aries, welcome to your horoscope. You know, Libra time, we're still there, and this is all about the negotiation. This is all about peacemaking, it's about being diplomatic. It also can have you get the contract, so this could also be a good time for you to get a job, to take things further. Now we start out with Moon and Taurus this weekend. It goes into Gemini, so that's third house. Think of this weekend as a time to just glean and gain information. Take some risk. Mars and Sag Sagittarius encourages you to take risks as Mars transits your ninth house. You know, take some chances. You're always taking chances. Uranus is in your first house. You've got to be inspired. If you're a, an Aries person, you know, born around the middle of Aries, which would be like around April. Oh, third through like the 11th, something like that. You're going to be really feeling charged up about something. Uh, you got to move forward with it. Pay attention to your spiritual life. Pay attention to, uh, you know, karmic debt. And uh, things that can elevate you to a better position. Well, greetings Taurus and welcome to your horoscope. So... We're starting out Friday, it's really nice. Moon's in Taurus, so people are feeling good. Um, Sun's in Libra, it's all about the sixth house. And the sixth house is about aunts and uncles, it's about dealing with details, it's service work, it's health issues, and it's coming together with other people to make improvements. You know, a lot of times government work is related to the sixth house as well. So if you're career seeking, this could be a good time to make yourself look good, get something good for work and, and do that and find what you need. And relationship wise, you like stable relationships, things should be either stable or just painfully depressing with Saturn in your seventh house. You know, the good part, you feel like I'm in a solid relationship <clears throat> In the bad part. You're like, oh, this relationship just really bites. I don't know why I'm here. I'm not getting what I need. Yeah, I hear that sometimes. Um, you know, Mercury is um, leaving the seventh house. So, you know, all the sweet talk goes back to getting organized and having to work and make your health get better. And so there's nothing wrong with that. But that's what you can look forward to this week. Hello, Gemini, and welcome to your horoscope. Okay, so this weekend, moon is in Gemini. So, you know, you get a Gemini moon... People show their other side. They, um, they're they searching for soulmates. They're searching for friends. Moon will be in Gemini up until 4.30 on Monday. So quite an active period of time from a little bit before 9 o'clock on Saturday morning until 3.30 in the afternoon Monday. Your influence is strong. Your ability to communicate is good. Your ability to be creative is great because Libra rules the fifth house. So, I mean... Love affairs, good creative projects, a better relationship towards your children. All these things are possible. You just got to work towards them. You just got to be conscious about them and be consistent to make things manifest. You know, the thing about like making art, music, writing, any of those creative endeavors is like you just got to keep practicing to make it. You know, it's not something that just bam happens, but it's easier to bam make it happen right now if you engage in it. And yeah, I'm sorry to hear about Mercury Retrograde. <laughs> Greetings, Cancer. Welcome to your horoscope. Okay, so... For you, <clears throat> the news is this. We've got the moon in Cancer from... And it's a waning period moon um, from 4.30 in the afternoon on Monday all the way till you know thursday morning at 3:29, it changes over into leo so 
So Tuesday and Wednesday, basically, you own those days this week. <clears throat> and if you're into gardening, by the way, these are really good planting moons for root crops like carrots and parsnips and radishes. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. And uh, garlic as well. Yes, you could plant your garlic then too and get good results. So, um, you know, Libra time is about your own family that you sort of adopt for yourself, how your parents were, what kind of tribe is around you, how you're relating to your house, your domestic situation. And it should be one of trying to create balance and beauty and harmony and fairness and good aesthetic. So you really got to do yourself justice. And I mean, you've got a lot of decorating skills. I mean, I always think of Libra as a sign of the interior decorator and cancer is like the most warm, cozy, homebody kind of feeling sign that there is. And so you can make things sweeter in your home environment or even with your parents, visiting family, family reunions, <clears throat> or, you know, just painting your house before the rainy season completely takes over. Um, you know, things are kind of crazy still in the work front because of Uranus. But we're seeing that you're going to get a chance to really express yourself and to be aware of a lot of things that you have issues with and from just the current world state of affairs. So um, hang in there. Things are going to get better. Well, hello, Leo, and welcome to your horoscope. I um, I want to acknowledge that the um, this placement of of Jupiter in your first house really gives you a lot more luck than you might know. It also gives you a lot of generosity. <clears throat> it gives you a lot of um, freedom to do better, and it gives you a spiritual values to uplift people. It should help you crack some good jokes. And make us laugh a little bit. We, we all could use a good laugh every now and then. Um, Libra time is all about the community, the neighborhood you live in, your siblings, your brothers and sisters, long lost cousins, uh, people you went to high school and college with, getting together with them. It's also about uh, gleaning information, getting yourself smarter, making improvements. The third house is one of the houses where we can make improvements in our life when we go through this and Libra is about having social grace and a sense of niceties and luxuries and sweetness you know this is when you bake cookies for your neighbors you know you know but yeah and um, right but don't put anything in them unless you tell them first that's just not fair um, you know it's, that's just it's terrible uh, let's see we've got um, a lot of interesting communiques coming to you because Mercury has creeped back into your uh, third house. So you should be getting some very inf interesting information. Now you thought you were done with something and then you're like, oh my gosh, out again? Oh, here we go. Uh, Mars in the fifth house. Pay attention to your male children. If you have boys, you know, they're where it's at right now. You know, they're, they're lighting up your life with their activities and their playfulness. And um, there's surprises around every, every corner, Leo. I, I wouldn't worry about it. Moon will be in Leo, though, Thursday and Friday of this, this coming week. So um, take those as your power days and initiate good behavior. <clears throat> well, hello, Virgo, and welcome to your horoscope. So first of all, Virgo, I'd like to say that you are known for being the buzzkill of the Zodiac. And we'll just stop at that. <laughs> I, know some, I know your friends are laughing at you right now. That's why I'm having such a good time. And seriously, though, not all Virgos are. A lot of Virgos help elevate us. They're really supporting us with their usefulness and their services. Um... It's a time period where you can make some money, serious money for Virgos this week, um, especially over the weekend. I could see that as a real manifestation time for you where you really utilize your talents and skills and you, you put this 
material satisfaction thing to work. Now, Mercury going in from your third house to your second house is, um, I said that, it's going to cost me money. No. <laughs> or I said that, it's going to make me money. <laughs> um, there is sort of a return. You know, I, I feel like a lot of times when Mercury transits the second house, it can give you money. And, and your initi your initial intention was to do something was that, you know, was going to make you some money. And you didn't really know how or why, but some of that's coming back to you now. Um, it's really easy to overspend when you have Venus transiting your second house because you want the life to be all pleasant and luxurious, but it isn't always like that. You know, we, we, we have to, to do things. There's a restlessness around the house. You kind of want to leave it more or, or move things around um, and um, fix things that might not be in such good repair. You're, you're focused on your spiritual life when it comes to your relationship. Although, you know, you're, you're a sucker for sexual surprises at this period with Uranus there. Starting out with the moon in um, Taurus, you know, it, it's a good weekend for taking off. But keep in mind that this weekend also, especially Saturday, Sunday, even early Monday, you know, showing off your skills and talents, your commitment to uh, leadership and being a good worker, they're going to come through for you. Well, hello, Libra, and welcome to your horoscope. So, instead of being so concerned with um, pleasing everybody, you know, I think it's time for you to please yourself. And, I mean, you can. This is a, a time since you rule this season, the, these uh, four and a half weeks or whatever it is we dedicate to um, Libra time. Make something of yourself, you know. Make yourself take a risk, take an adventure, move things forward. You think somebody you know is worth loving and you're not in a relationship? Be forward, you know. Say, hey, I'd like to meet you and get to know you better. You, you, ha you exhibit qualities that I think are worth knowing about. I don't know. It might work. Sometimes honesty works really well. I mean, it certainly does in the long run. Saturn transiting the second house. I mean, you've got to find things that are sustainable. Otherwise, Saturn can be depressing your income. So it's, you know, you're focusing on how to make your monetary situation work better. Um, you're, you got to keep your vehicles in good working order. Whenever Mars is in the third house, there's just this need to move around more. And, you know, Mars moves its own way. Sometimes, you know, the... Uh, the piston's not firing correctly, the bicycle's got a flat tire, the train's delayed because some tree fell in front of it, I don't know, you know. All these things can happen, and um, when you have Uranus transiting your seventh house, I mean, relationships are unpredictable, you, know, you have to go with that. Um, it looks like a great weekend for a trip or a, a little spiritual seminar, some higher learning for yourself, um, and there's a, there's a, there's a chance there's even some good luck involved in this, too. Imagine that. Go have a good time, Libra. Well, greetings, Scorpio, and welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, it's always darkest before the dawn. You know, next week we'll do a horoscope. It's going to include, you know, the sun moving out of Libra and into Scorpio, but it's still there. So we think of this is the harvest time where we're harvesting all the deeds we've done in the last year. And <clears throat> I don't know about you, but most of my Scorpio friends, you know, with Saturn and Scorpio, it's been a doozy. You know, there's been a lot of responsibility. There's been a lot of things we've had to get rid of. There's been a lot of things that could be interpreted as depressing. But there's also some really great things where we've embraced more maturity. And we've embraced more commitment and more of an ability to be consistent in our life. And in that way become reliable and seen as being just and fair and qualities that we want to have. So, um, you know, there, there's karma from things you may have said. There's karma from your love life, maybe past lovers. And there's this desire, though, to clean up your karma and to make it better. And how would we do that? You know this instinctually. It's by serving others, helping others, especially people who are isolated. That's how we make our, our karma better in a situation like this. Uh, the moon will be 
in Cancer, so that'll be in your ninth house, um, Tuesday afternoon till Thursday morning or, or whatever it is, um, rather Monday afternoon to Thursday morning. So in that time period, from Monday afternoon to early Thursday morning, seek out your higher values, seek out higher things. You know, we've got Neptune and um, Chiron in the fifth house, so spiritual love, you know, spiritual love can heal things. And um, Jupiter in the midheaven, it's like you're doing great works right now. Your career is accentuated and things seem like they're expanding, they're blowing up for you. It's a good time. Well, hello Sagittarius and welcome to your horoscope. Uh, what I see right here is a, a time of just really restlessness to move on and move ahead. You're going from party to party. Groups of people to groups of people. With, that's what's happening with the, the Sun and Libra. Social life and preparing for the future. These are two super important things. And some of these people are really good friends that help you along. They'll help you move farther than you ever thought you could. Now in your home life, there may be religious trips that you don't quite jive with at this point in your life or some kind of aesthetic where you feel like you can't be there live there but you can change those things you know you can change it by just honoring what those people believe in uh, i mean you know you can't honor meanness or cruelty or intolerance but you can honor maybe their strive for being uh holy or, or prudent perhaps you know just let them you know if they're getting some joy out of that you know and they think God's going to give them cookies for that you know it's okay <laughs> you know we don't have to be so threatened you know to say I'm so smart I know there's none of that that's all nonsense you know well sure you know there's people out there that are operating without any invisible source of help at least that's what they think <laughs> you know your ancestors are still praying for you, my friend. You know, they're trying to move the tribe forward and you and you really got to you got to understand that. So, I mean, for you, I'd say be grateful for how much good fortune you have even though you have some really hard things to deal with. You got a lot of friends that make life interesting. The weekend could be very romantic for Sagittarius. Well, Capricorn, hello and greetings Capricorn. Welcome to your horoscope. So, this is it. You know, for Capricorn, I want to say that um, <clears throat> your life is about to get better, okay? And, um, but first you're going to have to show responsibility. And I was a little bit hard on you last week, so I, I really want to apologize for that. But at the same time, I also want, to do, want you to do your best and to be just kind of on notice, you know, I have I have one Capricorn friend that, you know, I I had been close to and, and this person would tell me that, oh, I have terrible Octobers. And once I got to know this person more, I was like, well, part of it is because this person doesn't want to take on any responsibility. You know, they think that if they don't take any responsibility, that means they can't fail. You know, because, you know, when you try something, usually you fail at first. And so, by not doing anything, then you're perfect. Perfection is a bunch of BS. We're struggling, baby. And if you're not part of the struggle, you're missing the mark. So, I mean, struggle with your karma. Struggle with what's gone on and what other people need from you. And then you can make it right again. And, you know, by the time next month rolls around and you get Mars in the first house, then you can demonstrate what a real leader looks like and do it in a way that you're proud of. Well, hello Aquarius and welcome to your horoscope. Well, Libra time is about taking risks and being lucky and reaping good fortune from that and advances. It's climbing the big mountain. It's going to the university for a master's or a PhD or going, you know, or maybe just going to massage or chiropractic school or acupuncture school or whatever you want to learn. To, to move on your way, maybe just to be a better tie-dye artist for a weekend or, or raw food chef. I mean, there, there, there's another one. Um, it's all legit. Just uh, work on it. 
keep on uh, keep on working on what you need to work on and um, keep studying keep exploring keep going places you never went to before I mean this weekend looks great for you like if you wanted to take a trip or have some fun there there's a you know a mini trine in the air signs so I mean you'll be feeling it you'll be doing better than you normally have and um, you'll be rewarded for your efforts and so even though your environment's unpredictable and um, you know you have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders and there's some friends around that want to blow off some steam and have some good times with you. Well, hello, Pisces, and welcome to your horoscope. So as we're wrapping this whole thing up, this is about you and allowing yourself to let go of stuff that doesn't really belong to you. If somebody puts you in charge of their stuff, treat it as if it was yours. But realize that everything we have is ultimately borrowed. And, you know, fall is a time, you know, it's like a little mini spring. It's not quite as libido high as spring, but it is. It's the second most high libido because people want to cozy up for the winter, especially if they live north of 35 degrees. You know, most of those places get, you know, a little chill. They get a little frost. You know, they're further north once you're up to 45 50 degrees north oh my gosh forget it it's like darkness has taken us over <laughs> and um but since jupiter is moving through your sixth house it's time to just rectify with how lucky you are and how what a privilege it is to work with others and what a privilege it is to engage in any kinds of work that's for service for health for making our own society move to a better place. It's a giving thing that just keeps on giving. And um, you're hungry for, you know, good loving right now, you know? It, it would feel good. And um, the, I think the Beatles said it best, Pisces, that the love you take is equal to the love you make. All right. See you next week. Marn? What happened? Did it stop? No, no. The neighbor was just shining the light in the window. Here it is 10 o'clock. It was like... Uh, Healing of the near shower. Yes, the herbs. Herbs. Healing of the near shower. He's a one eight hour herbal up here. Call me a my darling. Easy, my dear. Even if you're sitting in your rocking chair.